minutes or less, I'm Jacob, and this video subject covers how Lyft is created. Now if you're liking the video so far, be sure to hit like and subscribe below. Now when we talk about Lyft, we're talking about the useful force that is developed by an, by an airfoil as air passes around it. It's the force that opposes weight and allows things to fly. But where exactly does it come from? Well, there are a few different theories to explain it. The first one we're talking about today comes from a man named Bernoulli. Commonly, uh, we hear Bernoulli's principle when referring to the, his theory. Now, Bernoulli's principle, named after David Bernoulli, who studied fluid dynamics back in the early 1700s. He discovered that as fluid moved through a narrow space, it increased in velocity and decreased in pressure. Now, visually, that's going to look something like this. Now, he had a tube that began to narrow in one section, so looking like this. And now what he discovered was as the fluid passed through this tube, in this case, we'll just do simple left to right, the fluid, as it encountered this narrow space, would tend to accelerate or speed up as it went through uh, the narrow space, decreasing in pressure. And then once it got back to uh, a more expanded part of the tube, would slow down and increase in pressure. So we're talking about fluids uh, going through a, a tube. How does that um, affect an airfoil? Well, airflow acts just like liquids do at the speeds that we're worried about uh, for helicopters. Now this changes slightly with uh, fixed wing as you approach the sound barrier, get to things like compressibility and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to get in that, uh, that subject today, but this effect is also known as the Venturi effect. And the same effect applies to airflow uh, just like it does fluid dynamics. Now if you note the lower half of this, uh, this tube, this Venturi tube, you can start to see the Bernoulli's principle uh, slash the Venturi effect applies to an airfoil. Now it's because of the camber or the curvature of the airfoil that uh, that causes the air to speed up just like in the case of the tube. So if we were to draw an airfoil right here, we'll note that this camber, camber right here and the curvature of the tube act somewhat the same when they're dealing with this flow of uh, either fluid or air. So what happens is the airflow impacts the leading edge of the airfoil, it's directed up and above, and it's going to hug the, uh, the shape of the airfoil due to this upper layer of air just kind of creating a boundary layer, just prevents the airflow from just blasting off, you know, up and away from the, uh, the airfoil. It kind of keeps this airfoil, airflow close to the wing, or to the airfoil, but this airflow is accelerating over this upper surface of the airfoil. Now, as it goes underneath the airfoil, it's not being accelerated as much. Airflow comes back together, you know, vicinity of the trailing edge, and then moves on past the wing. Now, what's going on, like I said right here, is the airflow is moving faster above the airfoil flow than below the airflow, the uh, the airfoil. And just like what we talked about here, if it's moving faster, it's going to have a uh, a lower pressure than underneath uh, the surface. So this is going to be higher pressure under here. Now the entire effect is increased or decreased based on the angle of attack or the pitch angle in the blade. So if we were to increase the pitch angle, increase it more and more, the airflow would be faster. You'd have even uh, lower pressure above the airfoil than below it. And if you were to, say, take out all the angle of attack in the blade for a symmetrical airfoil, you'd have equal airflow uh, speeds above and below and you wouldn't have any lift in the blade. Uh, so now what we see right here is there's a pressure differential above the blade and below the blade. And uh, with everything in nature, everything is constantly seeking uh, equilibrium. So what's happening is we have higher pressure, lower pressure. This is pushing the entire airfoil upwards with a force known as lift. Now the differences in velocities are shown again and again in wind tunnel tests by aerodynamic students all across the country just to prove this concept to get their degrees. All right, so that, uh, in a nutshell, is Bernoulli's principle. Now, another theory that has uh, been around for explaining lift comes from Sir Isaac Newton. And we've talked about him in a few of our other videos. So Newton's third law, to be more specific, uh, third law of motion states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now this explanation is based on the idea that an airfoil acting at an angle 
to the wind pushes the airfoil or air down and the airfoil up. So simply put, if we have say an inclined plane right here, we have an object, whether it be air, uh, fluid, anything like that, as it impacts that object, it is then directed down and that is going to cause the reaction of this having force pushed on it in the opposite direction. So action reaction, think of it like you're playing pool, you hit the ball against the side and it bounces off, that actually puts a little bit of force on this inclined plane, pushing it up. So this is also known as the inclined plane method of lift because any flat object can be used as a uh, inclined plane to create lift. Now when you apply this to an airfoil, it's just simply saying that as the airflow impacts the airfoil, it's directed downwards due to that action reaction, is then going to direct the airfoil upwards. Now both theories are accurate for uh, showing how lift is produced, however neither one by itself has all of the answers. For instance, although the action reaction theory logically explains lift, it can't explain how exactly a blade stalls uh, with too much angle of attack. Uh, with Newton's third law of motion, it would, you know, if we, as long as we have this action reaction, we can just continue to increase that angle more and more and more, get more and more lift until we get to a point where uh, this inclined plane is perpendicular to the airflow where it doesn't uh, produce lift anymore. But we know from studying airfoils that there is a point that we can increase that angle of attack, you know, 15, 20, 25 degrees, where the airfoil itself is going to stall and no longer uh, create lift well prior to getting completely perpendicular to the air uh, airflow. Uh, also when we look at Bernoulli's principle, um, some advanced aerodynamics dynamicists have looked at it to say that this theory by itself can explain why airfoils can produce, uh, or correction, why asymmetric airfoils can produce lift when completely inverted in the case of a fixed wing aircraft. So Neither one of these uh, theories are completely self-sufficient for uh, explaining lift, but it's commonly accepted that both of these are acting together uh, in order to explain where lift, come where lift comes from and how it's created. Well, that wraps up this video about the creation of lift. If you're curious about where I get a lot of the information for these lessons, I'd recommend checking out Sean Coyle's book, Cyclic and Collective. It takes a lot of these aerodynamic lessons to the next level but I'll put the link in the description below if you're interested. Also, make sure to hit like and subscribe below. Uh, but once again, that wraps up this lesson. Thanks again for watching. I'm Jacob, and this has been Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Safe flying.